Joining me now is Adnan Huskic, a political analyst. He's in the Bosnian capital, Sarajevo, for us uh, for more. Uh, Adnan, uh, despite the international court Srebrenica genocide verdict, as we just heard there in Axel's story, we are still hearing from Bosnian S Serb leaders how they are denying that genocide even took place. However, 25 years later, Bosnia doesn't even have a law that prohibits uh, denying genocide and genocide denial in general. Why is this the case? Well, I believe, I believe we have to start with the, uh, with the early days of, uh, of, of post-conflict period in Bosnia, which, uh, uh, where the reconciliation or dealing with the past really did not figure prominently on the international community's post-conflict agenda. Uh, not to mention that this was not even considered in any serious fashion by the domestic uh, political elites, because they actually strive on, on this kind of confrontation and conflict and deepening uh, divide between the communities. Uh, ICTI did, as you, as you rightly mentioned, provide adjudication and accumulated facts, but it was actually up to us to combat denial and come up to uh, uh, come to terms with our, with our recent history. And this is something that we failed to do. All of this was, in a way, still kept, uh, denial at least, was kept in check by uh, 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 an overwhelming presence of international community on the ground, which acted as a corrective by not allowing uh, genocide denial to become widespread. Uh, but since 2006, since the Europeans took over, since the Americans departed from uh, uh, Bosnia and uh, refocused their, their foreign policy elsewhere, uh, the Europeans uh, introduced a more hands-off approach to uh, uh, dealing with the political elite. And denial became, uh, genocide denial in Srebrenica became very soon uh, not only stronger uh, uh, in terms of frequency, but also instrumental in electoral, in electoral campaigns. So now, say, 14, 15 years after that, we are in a situation where very, very few people among the political caste in uh, Serbia or the RS uh, recognize uh, 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 Srebrenica genocide. I mean, we have to be reminded of the fact that the current Serbian uh, leadership and the main political figures are actually protagonists of Milosevic's era. And I would say for them to reject this period and atrocities and wrongdoings would actually mean admitting to their own political mistakes, but also alienating nationalist uh, uh, part of the electorate. Uh, now, 25 years after the war, genocide denial is prevalent, I would say, uh, uh, unfortunately, rather than something that we could consider something that, that belongs right. to the past. Right. Uh, Adnan, so what can the international community, as you rightly pointed, uh, the international community is still very much present in Bosnia. Uh, so what can they do to impose this law? Is there at least a consensus among them when it comes to this matter? Well, there certainly isn't. Um, we've been uh, um, in a situation where the international, uh, uh, the homogeneous international presence uh, collapsed uh, uh, in the mid 2000s with uh, Russia becoming increasingly antagonistic with regard to everything that the international community uh, does in Bosnia and uh, not no longer siding with the Western uh, countries when it comes to the course of action with regard to Bosnia, but also the presence of international community here. Um, uh, ever since, uh, uh, we are witnessing a situation where uh, there is no uh, uh, there is no strong and unified front on an international domain, and. Uh, only because of that, even though the Peace Implementation Council, where most major major countries sit uh, uh, and provides advice to the high representative, the UN high representative for Bosnia and Herzegovina, who is still on the ground here, but whose presence, uh, who, who could be described as an empty uniform, right now there is no political consensus to back any kind of decisions. And what they fear right now, it seems to me, and this is not only the question of the law uh, on, on the uh, uh, on barring denial of genocide, but also very, uh, very many other uh, pieces of legislation which could help Bosnia move further is that they believe that the high representative would actually, uh, uh, in a way, uh, uh, create an even bigger conflict uh, between the uh, between Russia and the West as a result of that, and then break completely uh, any consensus that there still exists uh, uh, in terms of international presence. And that's why I don't think that it's possible for international community to impose any law at this stage, not to mention that this would be probably completely rejected and now without any means of implementing or enforcing implementation of this. Uh, I don't know how this would proceed with the, with the Serb elite in Republika Srpska and also the uh, 
uh, it would face it would probably face the same backlash from Serbia, which is now increasingly recognized once again as during Milosevic's time as a center of Balkans and the most important country where Kosovo right. and Serbia dispute plays an important role. Right, Adnan, uh, just briefly, you know, as a Bosnian, 25 years later, um, are you optimistic when it comes to the future of your country, quarter of century after that horrific genocide? Well, I certainly am not optimistic. I mean, I, I, I live here and uh, uh, I look how this uh, uh, drive and the general consensus that existed, at least on an international level, gradually collapsed over time. Um, uh, what I think we Bosnians have to appreciate is the fact that when, when, the, when, the, when this tragedy happened, when genocide happened, when the war happened in Bosnia, um, we were living in the days and age when international law and international humanitarian law was still considered important, when norms were considered important. Um, uh, we got, at least, and I don't think this is going to satisfy the, the, uh, uh, the victims uh, uh, ever, but at least we got this uh, international adjudication. We have an overwhelming amount of evidence of what happened, uh, which is something that uh, uh, people facing similar similar situations right now in Syria or elsewhere in the world will probably not have. So I would say that the situation globally is not does not favor international humanitarian law, and we are bound not to learn the lessons. I think that would be a polite way of saying it, but basically to definitely repeat the mistakes from the past. Adnan Huskic, a political analyst, live for us from Sarajevo. Thanks so much, Adnan, for your insight for us here at TRT World.